What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, The Misplaced American. I'm your host, Justin White. I have another guest for you guys this week, my friend Richard, who is a very interesting individual. Not only is he an actor, he is a director, he is a producer, and he is a professional wrestler. <laughs> so this is definitely one of the most uh, interesting podcasts I've had, and it's a bit longer because just the conversation just flowed so naturally. And because I know him and I've worked with him for a while, uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys learn something from it. And I hope you guys get inspired from what this guy has to say, because he is a very inspirational person to me anyway. So yeah, his information will be in the bio. Uh, take a look, go follow him on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, go, go see one of his wrestling matches. Uh, like I said, super, super interesting guy. And I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, like I think like I think all of my like regular listeners or my regular interactions on Instagram, yeah. it was like it said by I think like five or eight people from my town listened. Whereas like the other hundred views I had in the last X amount of days were British. <laughs> but see, that's the beautiful thing is that like in your head, you're like, right, this will be my demographic. And then it's just what you're talking about. is so interesting to other people that like probably know less about what you're talking about. And you're going to get loads of people come in. That's wicked. Yeah, I just, I just thought I'd get more American support, but I guess Americans don't love Americans. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> so you want to introduce yourself for the people who don't know who you are? Okay. So uh, my name's Richard Summers Calvert. I am an actor, uh, writer, director, and professional wrestler. <sighs> that last part. Love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. A little bit of spice. Probably my favorite part about you. <laughs> <laughs> and on weekends professional wrestler <laughs> <laughs> my night my, my, by day actor by night what is this what is your wrestler name charles crowley we need we need to up that no it's uh, it's, um, like... <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah how's how's everything going for y'all or i guess your family has anybody been affected during this whole uh lockdown phase or the corona incident well I'm okay. Um, so I'm living with my dad at the moment and he's, um, I'm not allowed to say his age, but he's 76. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so he's like, obviously super concerned and he's been concerned from the get go. Right. So because of that, we've been in early days and haven't, you know, haven't been risking too much and all this kind of thing. So we're okay. It's just getting to a point now where it's getting obviously for, as it is for everyone, just harder and harder. At first, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Like I, I'm one of these people that is like, to me, a huge source of my happiness is progression in my career. Right. And every, I wake up and I'm like, what can I do today to push forwards? But like, obviously everything stopped, but, but when everything's going and all this kind of stuff, loads of my peers are like smashing it. And, right. I, and I just have a habit of comparing myself to them. So now everything's stopped. They're forced to stop. I'm forced to stop. We're all in the same position. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Just, gi just give me a breather just so I can actually just feel like I can in some way prepare myself to catch up. Oh, so, you, okay, so, you, so you're using it from the standpoint of, <laughs> like, it was like, oh, the, like the tortoise and the hare kind of race. Like, all right, well, now that the hare is sleeping, let me, uh, let me sneak up on it. Yeah, is it, yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, they're obviously going to be working their own way during this, but like... This is your time to shine. Like, this is your this is where you shine. Like, being yeah, forced to do nothing but work on your craft. But that's this thing, like, in my spare time, like, while I'm, wait, like, preparing myself for opportunities to come around where everything's busy, you know, basically, I'm just doing the same thing, but I know that, yeah, I don't know, it's tricky, it's tricky, but I'm just prepping, I'm spending all my time creating a voiceover booth because then I can get voiceover work. Then once everything starts up again, like I will have another string to my bow and I can make more money doing that. And that money can then be used for me to go to classes for me to go to casting director workshops. Can we just, you know, anything like that. So I guess in a way the certain situations is forcing, forcing us in is now bringing out a, just a different form of creativity in people. Yeah. So like, for the first month, obviously people uh, people really struggled for the first bit, but I instantly was like, right, let's say we're in here for a while. Right. Like w way with, with into the year. Like I was like, what can I, let's set myself a goal. And all this time, like 
part of my wrestling is that I really want to go wrestle in Japan. Ooh. So I've started learning Japanese. Like like act like now actively. Yeah. Could you could you give us some, give us something? Uh uh Korewa Hondes. That means this is a book. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna walk walk out on stage and the first thing you say is <laughs> Here's my book. My Hondas, no go. <laughs> look out, look out, it's the book wrestler. It's the book guy. I love this guy. Okay, wow. So, Japanese, anything else? Uh, yeah, so building this voiceover studio, um, learning Japanese, and they're the two main things, but it's just kind of like messaging casting directors and all that kind of stuff, and just gym every day. Oh, so you do, you do have an at-home station or at-home workout stuff? Yeah, I've got a bench. So, and I've got like a bar with some light weight. So I'm more fortunate than most that don't have a, um, a barbell. But um, right. aside from that, you know, those people, those guys who have a home gym, crazy. Oh, oh, <laughs> but, um, but actually, weirdly, like it's been really good for my legs because like I, I do so, I love strength training. And right. like now I am forced to do body weight stuff and squat just hundreds of reps and my knee is thanking me so much and I, uh, and, and my, i feel like my body's reacting to it for, to some to some extent i don't know how long that's gonna last i kind of miss heavyweights now no i think this is forcing a lot of people to do like one of my uh, one of the guys i follow on instagram a really good powerlifter i always see him deadlifting like, he did like every day super strong guy mm. and I've been seeing him do like playground or I guess you could say prison style workouts. You know, he's using like these little playground sets and using bands and just doing jumps and like and squats and split squats and just running in place and stuff like he's a big guy and things you if you follow him on Instagram, you would only think he was just a strong, just massive power lifter. But now I see him doing like literally prison workouts, pull ups, push ups and and I guess this is almost like this I said a virus is forcing us to out of our comfort zones into learning and doing new things. And I, I, I honestly enjoy, I see people hating on Instagram and Facebook saying, Oh, I wish you guys would just sit down and this and that. And I enjoy seeing people do new things and be active. Like I, I get excited when I see my friends, I have one friend who she's now creating her own, like I've been, since I met her, I was like, you know, you're a creative person. I think you could do your own clothing line. Or maybe one day have on clothing and now she's designing and doing her own clothes. You know, maybe it's, it's starting off small now, but I support that hundred percent. I think anyone who has any small talent, even as, even if it's mas making masks and people are going to clown you like, Oh, masks are useless. So what people are buying them, like <laughs> make your mask. I have a Absolutely. friend who made, made me a star Wars mask. I, I, I was willing to pay for it. You know, <laughs> like, Totally agree. Are you, are you swearing on your podcast? Can I say shit? Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> yes. I don't think I have, I have an audience of less than 18 year olds. So. Okay, fair enough. Good, good. <laughs> so, shit, shit, shit. Yeah, so <laughs> ob obviously, like, I, I get the whole, like, okay, there's going to be a lot of shit posting. Yeah. Like, sure. But to some extent, you've got to understand that people are trying to do something. They're trying to be creative. They're trying to probably entertain people like on my um charles crowley account on twitter that's fairly active and people that choose to follow me like i feel like i've you know i can't wrestle for them anymore and they find me you know i'm this entertaining character and right. charismatic doing all this crazy stuff so i'm just around the house when i've got some time i'm like right i'm gonna film a little skit and um i'm just gonna whack it up there and like it's really cool seeing people like adapt and try and be creative i even um i paid this animator 30 quid to do like a little cartoon skit as well that's and, dope yeah well it's different right but also it's i paid him 30 quid i know exactly i'm gonna get what i paid for um and, he, and he <laughs> but, sent, but, but it's almost more entertaining that way like, <laughs> absolutely like literally he sent me the draft today and i was just in tears and i'm just like this is just the, the best thing i've ever seen um, <laughs> So like, I'm just trying to think outside the box, like, and even it's funny. Sometimes I th I'd actually limit myself before this. Cause I'm like, well, it's no, there's no wasting time. Everyone's busy. Everyone's getting work. I need to do stuff. That's only going to progress my career. Right. And because of that, I can't waste time, like pissing about having a bit of fun and sharing that fun with people. Whereas now I can, and you know what? It's really making me quite happy. 
So Ooh, it says okay. a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. This is a bit of positivity in this in this dark cloud of a world right now. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah, hopefully it comes out I come out the other end and I'm like I put some time aside for that because it makes me happy doing it. So there are things uh in place in my life that are <sighs> I will say this this coronavirus is uh, well, the lockdown is in, in a sense has uh I guess brought out and made me a completely different person. And cause I was technically locked down maybe I think a week prior uh than everyone else was because my birthday it was my birthday. Uh the week before, the week prior was March thirteenth, and Brittany she was sick, and they weren't testing like random people at the time, so she was just told, "Hey, if you have the symptoms, go, go like go quarantine yourself." So she you know, she went away from the house, and it was just me and the baby uh, for <laughs> for a week, and I didn't want to go anywhere because I have I have asthma, uh, and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna kind of play it safe and stay home with the baby for a week. This will, this will brush over and be fine. Well, like six weeks, five, six weeks later, we're still in the house. But, uh, but yeah, it, so this has definitely forced me to, like I said, I, I was like, no, I'm going to do the podcast and I'm going to make sure I have topics. I'm going to work on this as hard as possible. So I've been doing that a lot more. Uh, my friends have now created quiz nights. So I'm doing like, we're yeah, doing pub quizzes uh, every week. There's a lot of quizzes going about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so something as, as an American, I used to work at a bar and you know here like a quiz night most most it was for older people like old people did quizzes yeah. whereas when I moved to the UK it seemed like for people from the age of 18 were doing going to pubs at night and doing quizzes like everyone loves a quiz yeah. and it's, it's interesting to me and so, and so I know I've been doing quizzes and I've been trying to read it's really hard to read so once once my once I'm in bed I'm asleep because <laughs> I don't have I don't believe in TVs in the bedroom so for in my head once they're in the bedroom you're sleeping but um yeah, I would say same with me. I like being this creativity that I'm having. I'm, we'll get into our possible ideas in a little bit. Uh, what's what I have going on with my plans with you? But we'll get yeah, to that yeah. in a, in a little bit. Uh, most people don't really know. I guess we how we met and everything, uh, yeah. which was at work. <laughs> the yeah. most simple story ever. And I kept hearing about this. I remember mm-hmm. I was talking to uh, Helen about about you. And I know she was talking about, she was telling you about me, or I'm sorry, she was telling me about you. And this is before and we'd met. This is before I even knew who you were. Right. Because I, at the time, I only knew Helen, uh, the owners of the gym, and Kelly. <laughs> I think that's the only people I've ever worked with. And I met Harriet once. Yeah. And um, so she was, she was going on and on. She's like, oh, and this lovely guy, uh, Richard, he's such a sweet guy. He's such a nice guy. And I was like, who's this Richard guy? <laughs> and then Alex had said something. He's like, oh, do oh, you know the actor? I feel like you guys would get along really well. And I was like, what act? Like, this is two people now telling me about this actor, wrestler, Richard guy. <laughs> and he's a really cool guy, but I've yet to meet this man. <clears throat> and then we had our first shift, and you showed up 30 minutes early. And Always. it might not, that might not <laughs> seem like a big deal to other people, but for <laughs> we worked at 5 a.m., <laughs> that was the opening time. So I get there at 4.45 and he's already there to set up everything. So It's out, it's out of fear. <laughs> I, I, I've never been, like, I don't, I don't want like, uh, Kelly to hear this and quote this, but like, you know, I'm not ever going to say I'm like the, the top on point. Like yeah. when I first started working at games, it was, uh, it was Gold's Gym. And um, I, I was way more immature than I am now. And I'm still struggling with that. But like, <laughs> it, it, it it just took me a while to like get there on time and all this kind of stuff. And, and she'll, she'll agree like my timing was rubbish. Um, and then when it comes to like closing shifts, I remember I'm, I'm so like, when I leave my house, I like, Oh, I check the door. Like it's not necessarily an OCD, but it's a factor of it. Like I check right. the door like way too much. I'm like, I just don't want the house to set on fire because I know that I'm careless and it sets on fire. I'll feel really bad about that. So it's the same with leaving the gym. She's like, just whatever you do, don't leave the saunas on. And I'm like, oh no. So like, I- yeah, I will say her her speeches she gives you. She goes from like happy, like giving giving you this speech to like, if this happens, you're gonna die. Everyone's gonna die. The building's gonna burn down. <laughs> Absolutely, you're going, to, you're going to going to jail for the rest of your life. And, I, and in my head, that's how I hear it. So I, I immediately go, no, I'm like, I don't want to close. I don't ever want to close. <laughs> she's like, hey, don't, don't mess up. I'm like, what? She's like, hey. <laughs> I'm like, oh. but, but because of that, every time I'd leave, I'd turn the switches off in the saunas and I'd take a picture of each switch 
So I could say, look, if it's on fire, I'd be like, look at this picture. Here's a picture of the norm. <laughs> Here's a timestamp. I did it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, and the same thing, because like, games is now, it started as games and new owners and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, right, this is my first fixed shift in a while. So I was just like, right, I need to get there. I know people arrive. And if it doesn't open up, I could see how stressed it makes Kelly. So in my head, I'm like, yeah, it's just worth just getting there a few minutes early. And it makes me less anxious. So. <laughs> well, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, I showed up. And I was like, I'm normally, I'm, cause I'm, cause I was military. I was always told if you don't, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. So for me to get there 15 minutes early and then someone else be there ahead of me, I was, I was, I was kind of, I was kind of upset. I was like, who's this guy? I think he's, I think he's better than me. <laughs> and then we talked and I was like, Oh, you're the actor. And that's when the whole, like the floodgates of conversation opened up. <laughs> because I was like, I wanted to be an actor when I was in college and it just didn't work out because I would join the military. But yeah. And it was, it was really like the instant connection. Like I was like, I want to be this guy's friend. <laughs> oh no, absolutely. I felt the same way. You're so easy to talk to. And I know um, other people have said that, but like, you're, you're so easy to talk to in the sense that if I don't have like a lot of knowledge on like the conversation, like the topic you're saying, like for example, like comics and like history of that kind of stuff. Love and and, and your, your knowledge of movies is totally different to the knowledge of movies I have. And it's so fascinating because you, like me, get well passionate real quick. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh, what do you think of this? And like, oh, I hate Terry Crews. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and I'm just like, so bad why you hate terry cruz side note on that i told everyone anyone that's listening if you remember or think back i shared a post excuse me a long time ago when this trailer of this terry cruz and ludicrous movie came out i think it was called john henry or something and everyone saw the trailer and i was like that looks so cool it's terry cruz and ludicrous and i saw the trailer and immediately went what is this this looks like the dumbest idea and the worst possible movie i've ever heard in my life and i just saw reviews on it and everyone i think it was bad like it was i think it was like almost close to zero it was so bad like not one person had anything good to positive to say about this movie yeah and i told everyone I, i'm such a over analyst even when it comes to the movie trailers the reason i didn't enjoy deadpool was because was because the trailers ruined it for me the trailers put every single good scene in the trailer and then they had eight like eight different trailers come out showing different scenes so by the time the movie came out i saw it and i was like well, i know where the direction is going what give me something give me something new and by the time it came out, I was like, I mean, it was like, don't be wrong. It was a good movie because I love Ryan Reynolds. I think he's probably my top three favorite actors. Yeah. But <laughs> whoever, that whole period with the trailers thing, just it ruined the movie. Like, it could have been better. But yeah. And just quickly on that note, that's the thing I learned early on in filmmaking is that I, I, I put together this rough trailer of one of my short films. And I was like, this tells the, tell, like hints at the story really well, but it, you don't know who they are or what's going on, but it, it's, you know, it kind of gets ugly, something across. And the guy, I sent it to the editor, I was like, can you like polish this? And he went, you can't put, like the, the trailer is to put bums in seats. It's not to tell the story. It's not to hint at the story of the film or the vibe. It's literally, boom, 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 put like key thing, key thing, key thing, beautiful shot here. It's really technical. Right. And um, ever since he told me that, I've noticed that just so many, I watch trailers so differently and they do just put like the shiniest bits in there. And it's sometimes, especially with comedies and character driven stuff, it's so annoying because you're like, Oh my God, that's a hilarious moment. And then you see it in the film and you're like, yeah, it would have been, but I've seen it. That's I think, I think that's where Netflix needs help. All the Netflix originals, they will actually put the entire plot in the, so I'm like, Oh, this is a good short series. And then I watch the first, the short series and I'll wait for that one scene that they showed to come uh, in, the, in the trailer to come up and that's as and it turns out that's like the biggest part that's like the biggest plot twist in the in the movie or the show and i'm like wow this, you guys just ruined this for me like the whole thing was bad after yeah. that because you guys just told me the whole story yeah so do you have any i guess anything coming up like any i guess long term like like what is what is i guess after the virus is over what are you hoping to achieve like long term down the road so, or even, or even short term, like what's actually, yeah, like what, what do you have coming up after the virus is over? Like, what's something that you want to? So the next, the, well, the next two projects that I'm involved in that have been sh- filmed and shot. Uh, one is called uh, Edge of Extinction, Ooh. which is this kind of dystopian, uh, barely anyone's left, and the majority of people have turned to cannibals. Um, and I play like a pack leader in that. Um, and it's 
it's it's two hours twenty. Like it's a hefty film. Oh, that's a movie. Oh wow, yeah, man. That's yeah. A... <laughs> and uh, but I tell you what, considering it's one of these uh, lower budget films, you'd think oh, two hours twenty, low budget. Oof. But actually, they do a really good job. Um, I went to the premiere and I was just so impressed by what they did. Um, so that's coming out May the 18th and that's um, coming out in the UK May the 18th. So there's some quarantine watching for you and anyone else that's interested. Oh, is it coming out on Prime or? Um, they haven't been specific, but May the 18th UK distribution. So either it'll be out on DVD. If it's out on DVD, it'll be out on digital because digital is easy. They send a link to the distributor and they put it up. So this is just a movie that you were part of, like you didn't. Yeah, have that was just me. I'm just acting in that. Okay. Um, but that's like a great thing for my CV. So after this, I'm just going to milk that as much as I can, try and uh, get in there with cast and directors, and just you know use that. And the other thing is my own feature film that I wrote, produced, directed, um, and starred in. I know what a dickhead, but um, <laughs> it's called Drive Me to the End, and that shines a spotlight on autism and positive communication. Um, and while when I wrote it, I didn't know too much about autism, I'm a massive advocate of positive communication. I right. think talking to people is so valuable and uh, everyone has their own way of um, dealing with grief, dealing with issues and everyone, you know, people on the spectrum obviously have their own issues with social interaction. Okay. Their brains think differently. So it's kind of like, right, it'd be really lovely to put someone who's in that position who struggles to talk and someone who's in a different position who struggles to talk put them in a car for three days as they travel somewhere together and write a movie around that. I, I know I've seen the trailer for that. Uh, I'll share it. Uh, I'll share a link with the, with this podcast whenever it comes out. Do. I, uh, to me, it looks really interesting and I've showed a few people and they, they both, they all loved it. So that's, well, they just, and just this is just the trailer. Uh, so I guess does this virus, uh, I guess it puts a hold on your premiere then, doesn't it? It puts a hold on the premiere, but the premiere is more of like, uh, for everyone that was a part of it, right. that's a really big deal for them and for me to say, look, guys, we made a feature film. Right. Like, the, the amount of people that are actually making feature films at this level, like, is so small, which is why no one does it, because it costs tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. If you're getting, like, investment, then it just gets more and more. And that's hundreds of thousands is still very, 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 like, shoestring budget. Feature. Yeah. Um. So it's an awesome achievement. Like I was in so much debt once this was finished and I've just had to like work my way out of that, which was really hard. But like, I'd, I'm not someone that like appreciates my own accomplishments much. I'm like, okay, that's done. That's a good stepping stone to the next stage. Yeah. It's a, you immediately go into like, all right, well, this is, this is the bare minimum where I could be from now on. Let's keep going from there. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, this is an amazing thing, but like, now I need to move up from that. This is my, my base. Yeah, you, you don't ever take time just to breathe. I'm like, oh, wow, I did that. Which is why the premiere is so important because we can dress up, we can have <laughs> a few drinks, we can go and chat to the cast and crew that did put so much work into that. So I guess you're, because you're, you're actually a really good example because how long have you been doing this? Uh, acting and... Acting, I've been a... Well, it's hard to say because, you know, you, you're 90% of the time you're out of work, but I've been chasing it and progressing in it for about six seven years and and i made a production company in 2014 and made my first short in 2015 are you are you where this is gonna get deep uh you don't have to answer if you don't want are you where or are you close to where or anywhere near where you thought you would be when you started this journey seven years ago no i'm behind really like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because th this is each, you know what? This is really tricky because each year that goes by, I get, I find myself more stressed more frequently because back when I left uni, I went straight into touring theater and I thought, cause I, lo I loved theater and I still do. Um, but I was like, this is awesome. But you know what I find really difficult cam acting for camera. Like you've got to be really small, but also so honest. Right. The camera will tell if you're lying. Right. And I was like, this is so, and it was so hard. I sucked. Um, <laughs> and I was like, that is the one I've got to do because I want to be the best actor ever. And I remember people being like, yeah, TV though, it's not even good acting. And I was like, but the more you research, the more you learn about it, the more it's like, no, you've got to put the most honest performance ever into that. 
Um, and you do with theatre, except you're giving the honest performance to the person in the back of the room. Right. And that's, and that's, that's what I'm familiar, I'm comfortable with. I, I, I wanted to be on, like, on a stage, like, like in Broadway or something. You know, I wanted to project my voice to the very back person so they could hear me. I wanted to be that big, boastful person that everyone saw. And, like, yeah. But you, you and I naturally are like, quite like we the way we talk we're like hands fly everywhere well, yeah well, well, i have well, to contain well. myself in the podcast and not raise my voice when i'm talking <laughs> exactly man like we like that so it's, it's natural for us but yeah and you know i left uni i was like right i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna get a great agent i'm gonna get on tv get these small credits then once i got those get the bigger credits then i'll get into the bigger films go to america live there get work there and it just hasn't worked out that way and it gets to a point where you know, people like this is a really hard industry. And I obviously, of course, of course it is. But uh, a friend of mine, Kate Lister, who's in Driving to the End, she's doing so well at the moment. And she said to me, she had a, she just, I said to her, I was like, I was really sad. I was like, this sucks. Like, I, I, I know I'll get there one day, but like nothing's budging. Like, I just wish something would budge a little bit. And she said, look, it's clearly what you're doing right now is not working. No matter what you're getting these credits and stuff, which was all great, but like in terms of progression you want, it's not achieving that. So you've got to change what you're doing. And I, I was like, she's like, you need to just go and do this. Go and that. I was like, oh, I, I got a little bit defensive. I was like, whoa, like yeah. I'm doing everything. I wake up and I do this. I email these people, do that, do that. And she said, okay, but that's not working. So you've got to, to stop, take a step back and think, what else can I do? And t- let's take a different approach and see how you go about it. And I, at the first, for a whole day, I was oh, you know, she doesn't understand how much work I'm putting in. I'm going to go off and just crack on. All right. Um, then I spoke to this other actor mate of mine. He's um, Mark. And he, he said to me, he, said he just got his first little TV gig. And as I say, little doesn't sound really patronizing, but like it's a, a small role, but like in a repeating in a series. Right. And um, he's, I think he's in his 50s. Um, and he's just got that and yeah he started later in life but he's like he's telling me he's like you've just got to keep grinding and all this kind of stuff and his advice with her advice I finally just stopped and I had like a little breakdown and I thought she's so right but but and but he's right doing it in his own way as well so I just stopped and I just redid everything I thought you know what I've just been so like blinded I need to put my focus here. I need to go to more workshops. I need to go and network more rather than just, to, just focus on trying to get these, you know, I'm getting right. into details now, but like at the end of my, I guess in summary, and my point is I'm never going to give up and I'm always going to keep going. I just need to make sure that I stay, it's hard to stay focused and stay completely on it in the, the right way. And I have, for, for like six, seven years straight, and how do you know you're going the right way? And then if, if you don't get as much feedback as you want and you try this other way and you don't get much feedback, feedback there because that's the industry and you're like, which one's right? But, but wouldn't you say you definitely progressed, I guess, in a, not maybe not as much as you want to, but it gets in a more, you progress in a different direction. Whereas before you said you had an exact goal, you want to do this, 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 and be there at a certain time. Yeah. And now it's like, all right, well, I did this and this, but this led me there to there, back to here. So instead of you going the straight line you wanted to, you've found other things you enjoy that made you maybe better uh, as a, maybe a producer, as a director, as an actor. And now so you can use those, um, I guess, skills that you've learned on the side journey, like, almost like a video game, all the skills and the extra points you've gained in, during this side journey to come back to the main mission and now you'd be maybe the role you would have gotten six years ago as this small TV role, a small movie role. Now you can use those skills to become maybe a, a massive role or a key role in a movie. Because maybe or even the roles you get now, maybe you notice, have you noticed, oh, wow, I wouldn't have, like five years ago, I definitely wouldn't have got that because I wouldn't have known that skill. I wouldn't have had this talking ability. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Like because of all the different stuff I've done now, and behind the camera, I know what it takes in front of camera technically, which has helped me massively. You right. see these TV actors come in and they just walk in spot, boom, and they smash it and leave. Because in TV, it's quick. They do not give you a chance to like rehearse much. So they're just like, boom, done, right, next scene. And like, I am so ready for that because I have been on the other side of that, like producing things. Yeah, you know how um, fast 
how much how much daylight you're burning essentially oh my, yeah but exactly so but it's also like understand like character prep and like and wrestling like that's constant theater and that's physical theater and now yeah. that means i know basic stunt work and that's a really interesting thing to tell agents and casting directors that i can do hand-to-hand -hand stage combat i can do stunt falls um i do this on the weekends and they're like oh that's interesting i, I don't mind getting punched in the face guys go on hmm. <laughs> So you're 100 percent right, man. Like if if I'm thinking of it in a positive way, that I've got a huge skill set, um, and like that is really going to benefit me when you know when the opportunities pop up, I'm more ready for them. I just need those to knock down the door a little bit to get those opportunities that I want. So so you wouldn't give yourself an expiration date then, would you? Like no, is, like a like a date to be like you know what. If I don't, if I'm not famous, if I'm not like in a sw swimming pool next to JLo and then <laughs> by the age of 45, I quit. I'm done. Nah, my mind right. doesn't work that way. Like, I think the reason why I'm so desperate to do it as soon as possible is because I want to, I'm aware you only live one life and I want to live the majority, as much as possible for as long as possible, doing what I love to do. Man, all right. Somebody just <laughs> got a book deal. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, like, that's why I love, that's why I've fallen in love with wrestling though, because it has allowed me to, I feel like I've got something to give and right. I think I can, I could be really, I could be something special and like, I don't know why I just, something's there. And like wrestling's allowed me to like in the acting world, um, I'm a six foot white ginger guy that's slightly athletic physique. There's hundreds of us like, and, and I've got to do my best to sell myself and stand out. In wrestling, they're like, right, who do you want to be? And I'm like, oh damn. Like I am I'm, I'm just like, right, I am I I'm am the book guy. I'm the book guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and like I love that because like so many wrestlers don't come from an acting background. And I'm like, this is it, I can smash this. And the fans react and I and I just you don't get that in the acting world, man. So like I do appreciate wrestling for that. It doesn't help me get along. I will say you definitely from me the moment I met you, it was like immediate between you and my best friend uh, in the states. His name's Malachi. Uh, he's an author, author, author. I'm not sure how to say that word. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, between you guys, I think talking to you because around the same time I kind of was talking to you guys simultaneously. Yeah. And I remember coming to work one day and talking about you about movies and acting. And I went home that night and I was like, man, maybe I should look, look into it. Look, 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 I used to really enjoy like you know being in front of people and trying to act and wanted to be an actor and had my aspirations of acting. And then I came back and I'm, every day I talked every like once a week I talked to you and it was like a once a week thing. And I think by the end of the month I was sitting there and you were talking to me. You asked me a question about one of your movies. I'm like, what's your idea with this? Like, just give me an idea. And I was just talking to you about it. It's just, it's just a simple idea. You were like, man, you'd make a really good producer. And I was like, what? Like get out of here like i don't know anything about Absolutely. producing Absolutely. and uh, so i looked in, and then you got me looking into that and i looked into like film and i looked into recording and then this, that's what gave me the idea maybe not the whole idea but this is what kind of geared me towards powerlifting i mean not powerlifting uh podcasting i was like whoa where that, that took a turn because <laughs> <laughs> podcasting. this is my powerlifting <laughs> <laughs> and it's long story short i time travel it's my powerlifting <laughs> but uh but no, and it kind of, because I, I saw the equipment online one day, and then you told me, like, oh, you have an interesting story. And then everyone at work kind of told me, it's like, hey, you know, you're really easy to talk to and listen to. You should try to record yourself sometime. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to be creative. It's like, if, if he can be creative and not give up, I was like, I can be creative. Like, even something small like podcasting. And so I, I told you, and I, I think I told you and someone else, I was like, I'm going to buy equipment this weekend. And I'm going to buy it all. And I went and just bought all the equipment I needed. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Like one of my friends in the States, he podcast and I was like, he does it. He makes it seem so effortless and so easy. And I was like, I'm just going to record myself. I'm going to do it. And so, yeah, you, you definitely inspired me to do that. And I'm, <laughs> I guess I, I guess I can say something. I, I'm, I'm currently struggling, but trying to work on a short, a short film that you're helping me with. Well, you're trying yeah. to help me with you. You've given me the, the tools and I didn't like. I didn't realize how much money it took just for one day of filming a like an eight minute short film. You know that's so that blew my. That's something I learned. Like I didn't. I thought you know, oh, short film, get a camera, some people acting in a shitty bedroom, and this is it. Like a couple hundred bucks. So that was 
but yeah, so I, I, my my goal, hopefully, by the middle of next year, I want to hundred percent say I want to say I have, I have made a short film. Yeah, I just I, I I think you will because the the, the amount of people that have said to me, oh, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna buy this uh, kit so I can do podcasts or. I'm going to buy this so I can uh, make a film. Like I'm going to buy a camera and all this. I'm like, the amount of times I hear it and then they don't actually do it right. or they kind of half do it and then like don't actually finish it. Or not. It's so often, man. And you're like, all right, I'm going to do a podcast. And then like next day you send me a picture. Like, look at this kit I got. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's easy to talk about. Everyone talks about it, but yeah, it's just different. But it, doing it. Can I just say something really quickly? Cause you're super complimentary and like, you're, t- you're telling me that I motivated you, but like, th- I do not get the response in conversations often that you give me. And the amount of times I've come in, you know, it's really early in the morning and I, I love working at games, but obviously like the dream is out there and going to yeah. these auditions and stuff. And, and while you're working there, you're doing your job, you, your mind can like float that way. Right. Especially when it's so early in the morning, it's dark outside. These things are <laughs> up. And sometimes I think, you know what, like nothing's happened this week. And I'm feeling really down about it. And you're like, yeah, but like, and you're telling me about like, just how I come across to you and like, yeah, but you've done this and that's a huge achievement and all this kind of stuff. And you really like raised my positivity from work. And like, okay. and, and there's so many things like, like when you, when I, I asked your opinion for a reason about like, what do you think of the script? And you've completely changed the end of my feature film that I'm writing. And like, stop. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, was like, oh. I was like wait a minute and i got like a little pad at work let me just scribble that down really quick yeah man you and your little quick notepad <laughs> you will whip that up quick so fast and then i went i wrote that and i put, i sent myself a quick email which just was like bullet points i went home and i wrote around each one of those bullet points and i changed it all i spent like hours just changing like the last five pages of this thing and just playing with it and i was like whoa now it's more unique and all this kind of stuff so yeah. So anyway, just saying like, I appreciate that a lot because you're so positive and it's, and it's nice to have someone like that when most of the time I'm, I, I'm, I'm a positive thinker, but when it comes to me, I'm very hard on myself. So I'm, I'm really big on, uh, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I was always told give someone their flowers while they're still alive. And so like, man, like you, even because for me, like I'm, I'll be, I'm, I'll be 30. Well, I'm 29 now. And even to me, as much as you accomplished, like you've been behind a camera, you're going to be on a, on a, on a screen, you've been featured and stuff. Like I've always wanted to be like in even a background in a movie, you know, like I want yeah. to be the guy who's like, Hey, all right, stand there and read it and read a newspaper. And I, I've always wanted to do that. And like, so for you to be living the dream that I'm living in, but, and there's no jealousy in me whatsoever. I'm, a, I'm the kind of person, if my friends are succeeding, I'm succeeding. Just because I I'm I'm supporting you, I'm supporting your supporting cast. I'm I'm there clapping clapping for you the whole way. So like I, like I said before, another podcast. There's enough bread out there for everyone to eat. So why why would me hating on you benefit me in any way? But because of that attitude, when I do get anywhere, I just want to grab you and bring you with me. Oh well, yeah. Once once <laughs> please no one, no once you act on a movie with Brad Pitt, please have me there so I can. <laughs> So I can nice. tell Brad Pitt how terrible an actor he is. Um, you, can my, you can be my stunt double. Oh, yeah. Oh, because we, we 100% look alike. Exactly. I'll I mean, just with, with the beard, except I might have to wear a toupee because I don't. Oh, have, yeah, sure. Yeah, I yeah. don't have glorious hair, ginger oh, yeah. hair. <laughs> the individual for that one moment. <laughs> so if you, I guess, if you made it, like, because you did say, like, oh, jokingly, like, oh, I'll, I'll take you around with me. But, like, if you actually did make it, you know, is there something you would do for, like, your small community of, I guess, actor friends, or your support, like I say, your supporting cast? Like, how would you, what would you, like, come back to do? Or what would you do for, like, the people who, like, the little people, I guess you could say? That's interesting. Is that, is that something you've thought about? Like, you know, man, once I have my yacht and once I'm on a beach in Spain, am I ever going to think back to, you know, my days at Gaines when these people supporting me like yeah so i've got um who who doesn't like when they've got like big dreams like imagine that as the, the cliche is like the oscar in the shower like yeah them, like, <laughs> but like in in a really like i guess in a in a silly shallow sense I, I i've always imagined like my closest mates and everyone that was like supportive and active in in my life i just want to like invite them to this like let's say i had this big giant house because of all the right. success 
and I just put on this ridiculously outlandish, unreal party. And I just want to fly everyone out there for this thing, everyone that's really been there for me. And in my head, and like being able to pay for all that because I've not ever had much money. And like all my friends are out there like earning a living and, and like secure jobs and all this kind of stuff. And they're putting a lot of like, you know, faith in me to do this. So there's that, it's not pressure, but like the day that it pays off for them as well. And everyone that's around me, you know, years going by when I started, there was family members like, Oh, you're going to be, you're going to be great. You're going to be famous, all this kind of stuff. You're three years later. They're like, Oh, you're still doing that. <laughs> and it's like it's so hard to hear but that day it will it will pay off so much because the hard work they'll, they've all seen it they've all been a part of it so they are going the people that are going to be as happy as i am well you know close to that's going to mean so hopefully so much to them as well because like geez man he actually did that and i want them all there for it that would be amazing so in a really superficial shallow party like money sense that's something i'd love to do I like I like how while you were describing the story, you never once said if or like if this happens or maybe it's happen. Like you were definitive. Like when this happens, I, I'm going to do this. Things like that. Like you're using, pretty much using affirmation words to say this is going to happen, which I'm proud of you for because a lot of people don't believe, or I guess, I guess I'm, a, I'm a firm believer of you know uh, speaking things into existence. So what what you say is pretty much what's going to happen, or what you write down is what's going to like. Can, can come forth if you put enough effort behind it. So yeah, and you're working towards your goals. So I, I definitely think I, I like how positive you are when it comes to talking about your future. And when it happens, I'm looking forward to partying on your yacht. <clears throat> that's, good that, that's good that it comes across that way because I get what you're saying. I think in my head, there's always there's always going to be like doubt and worry, but like I just know that I'm gonna I've got to get there because I'm never gonna stop because I will never be at the end thinking what if I'd kept going? Because this is, I've always known this is the only thing I really want to do. I want to be so good at it that people cannot ignore me. So like when I get to that point and everyone gets there, like that's, that's such an like motivating, awesome moment. So when it comes to the, the people that have been around me and supporting me that time, it's been tiring for them and exhausting for them. So that to me will be an amazing moment. So do you have a, <laughs> So I, I know you say, I guess you you enjoy acting more than directing or one thing more than the, like producing more than directing or acting more than producing. Uh, yeah, I'm an actor. I, I love, I love acting. And that's yeah. the only thing with uh, when you're producing and directing and writing your own thing is that it does. It, that's why I wrote my role in because when I first did it, I was like, right, I'm going to create my own character just so I can prove that if given an awesome role, I can prove what my worth. Right. But then obviously the, the film gets going and you start to see the bigger picture. Um, and I became so like obsessed with making sure this film is powerful and gripping and perfect in every way. And I realized I had to make sure my character wasn't wildly complicated. Like every character is complicated, but also, you know, Kate has to play someone on the spectrum. We have to pick a point. She has to go research. Whereas me, it was a little bit close. My character's a little bit close to me. So, and thank, thank goodness he was because during scenes in my head, I'm like, the sun's going, I can see the sun going. Oh, I can see the sound man shaking his head. No, in my peripheral, I'm completely out of character. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> and they're like, you yeah, know, sounds not good. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay, cut. Uh. You know what I mean? And like, that's so difficult. Um, I love directing. Like it was an amazing experience. I love writing, but for me, I just, the, the golden thing is immersing myself completely in a character. And if I'm given an opportunity to like almost method act in like a feature or something and really right. go in, oh man, what a dream. So how would you describe, so that would be your, I guess your dream movie. I, guess I, knew, I know you say you wanted to be in movies rather than TV shows. So I guess like you wanted to, like what would you be, if you were set, like, like, like uh, maybe not, I, I use this example because he's the purely perfect role and no one else could, I'm really big on actors who no one else can play the role that they played. Yeah. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark. What would be yeah. your, what would be your Iron Man movie? Like that you would play in that, you know, that or what would be your type of movie that you'd play in and you know that that'd be your role and no one else can do. 
And so are you basing this on like a character that exists? No, no, no. just in general, like if any movie possible, like the, the notebook, you know, <laughs> something like, like something similar to that maybe, or anything like what would be like drama, comedy, action, like superheroes, porn. I, what, I, don't... <laughs> like, I would never have said the notebook. However, uh, because <sighs> Ryan Gosling, like pe- women adored Ryan Gosling in that because of the character that yeah. he put forward that character women, and men were all oh, watching that like jesus like this guy like character driven stuff man like i guess it's another cliche it's like oh you know like all the oscar stuff is character driven stuff but like it's the opportunity for someone to say look this guy has like I guess, yeah, like, similar to your physical attributes and all this kind of stuff, but like he thinks this way and like therefore he moves like this and like actually he doesn't have your physical, you know, attributes. You've got to lose like five stone and shave your head and and like chop an ear off. And I'm just <laughs> a, little, a little part of, I don't know, it's, it's just something where I can go all out for and I just want to be able to prove how good I can be. So something that's really character driven and getting across a really, really unique character and making that unique character relatable to people that's that's what's so impressive if we talk in a really like simple sense the romantic comedies like I, I i love comedy i feel like i'm really good at comedy as well and like i love british awkward humor that's like this oh god it's so dry do, do you hate it? <laughs> it's so dry. <laughs> I just, I just love the awkward pauses. Like, it's kind of like in, in in America, someone would say this is really awkward. Whereas in in the UK, too polite to say that it's awkward, so it just stays awkward. And I've been in those situations so many times living here, <laughs> like in <laughs> real in real life, like people <laughs> in your face looking at you, and I'm like, oh, good morning. They're like, good morning. Oh, like, I'm sorry. Hiya. You all right? And I'm like, yeah. All right, bye. <laughs> That's the end of it. And I'm like, all right, that was weird. But like, to them, it was like, oh, he's such a sweet guy. I'm like, well, I, just, I just said, hey, <laughs> like, say good morning to you. Like, hey, and- that's comedy gold right there. That's <laughs> the kind of thing I'd write in a script. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's so, it is so weird to me. It's actually, it's actually an idea I have for another short film. Oh, not a short film. Actually, a future long-term thing. Uh, an American coming to the UK. You know, who's, oh. never, who's never thought of that? So but, you, uh, you've got loads of short films now. You're like, oh, another my next one. <laughs> <laughs> Before you even done the first one, that's great. Uh, yeah, I guess we're kind of coming close to the end of this bad boy. Cool. But uh, I do have one driving question I have to ask you. Okay. What is one actor that you feel you love that everyone seems to hate? Da, da, da. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Like who's just one person that you for some reason everyone's like, oh, he's such a bad actor. Like he's such so, he's such a like this and that. But you're like, wow, or actress. And you're like, wow, actually, I really appreciate this character. Like he's like, wow, he's really good, really good at this. I think there's two people come to mind, but like hate is a strong word. No, like, not hate, but everyone sees every movie they're in. Everyone's like, oh, I'm not gonna watch that. Okay. Originally, if if you if you asked me that years ago, I think a lot of people would say that Jack Black is someone that like i remember ages ago they were like oh yeah but he only does jack black he's only that <laughs> yes but so he, good <laughs> but it's so good and that is a he's a perfect example of something that on paper you'd be like well no one's gonna believe this guy's legit but he he makes him everything he does so out there but so believable and so relatable and like jumanji he's so good yeah i don't i don't know how, like he's my favorite character in both the jumanji movies i have no <laughs> idea why <laughs> I'm a huge Jack Black fan and like if I could when you ask that question like what kind of film would I want to be in no matter all these Oscar winning films and all this like hardcore stuff which I 100% want to do right. I want to do comedy oh, yeah. after all that because and, but good comedy comedy that gets a good strong message across right. comedy that's done well not, not today's rom-coms that are like you know Notting Hill was like a really good film cinematography was stunning mm-hmm. And like everything was so so good, whereas this day and age they're kind of like, oh yeah, rom com. It doesn't really get seen anymore, and you know why you watch it. You're like, actually, the story here is rubbish. The characters are one dimensional. Right. Um, and yeah, so like the kind of like Jack Black is just so funny, and yet like 
I've seen him in some really good films. He, he's a fantastic actor, in my opinion. Um, and the second one, I say, is Channing Tatum. Uh, I really don't think... Like, he gets a lot of stick because when he started, obviously, he was, like, a good-looking young guy, and that's why he got cast. And you watch back, and you're like, yeah, okay, this isn't all right. But, like, <laughs> but like as, as the years have gone on, he has worked super, super hard. And, like, every now and then, he puts in a performance, which makes me think, I really do think this guy c- can do a really, really, really good job. I'm going to debate that. I think he has a good team that picks really, really ideal roles for how bad of an actor he is. So you are, you, so you're blaming his, not blaming, you're basing your judgment of acting based off the role he's playing. For instance, uh, 21 or Jump Street, or whatever, 20 Jump Street. He's such an awkward, bad actor. And I, I won't say bad, because you have to be a good actor to get cast in anything. I think he's such a subpar actor amongst other people in that movie that his awkward, like faces and scenes, he, the things he does in the movie are funny because the movie itself is funny. But as whereas I feel like he could be replaced in any, any movie he's been in, I feel like he could be easily replaced and the movie would be just as good, if not better. Yeah. That's how I, be, but that's, you know, that's my opinion on how I judge him in movies. I think that's fair. I think it's, I think it's because I see it from like a progression standpoint. And I, I think if you can progress from here to here, there's no reason why you can't progress more. Like, I think from, like, in school, I was never the best actor. There was uh, two other guys. John O'Davies, he's doing incredibly well. He was, like, the top guy. And uh, Theo St. Clair, and he's smashing it at the moment. And I was the one that, like, started off rubbish, but I could see the progression. Everyone could. Right. And I got to the end, and I was like, actually, he's a pretty decent actor now. I got, like, a little award. They're, like, most progressed and all this kind of stuff. An award that no one wants. But, like, I've always remembered it. And I thought, whoa, hey, if I can get to here to here, the possibilities are endless because there's no reason why I can't just keep progressing. So I think when I see him and I see him in, um, uh, what was it called? Like it wasn't called Fox Trap. Oh, uh, what's not whiskey take fast. I don't know. Uh, it's, I understand about Yeah. Yeah. But like, um, that wrestling film and I was like, yeah, okay. They, they, I'm sure he's being directed like crazy and all this kind of stuff, but I thought he did a really good job with what he was given. And like, I thought this is wicked to see him go from this to this. So in my head, that's why I have some faith in him because I think he, he he has more of an ability than a lot of people give him credit for. I guess we'll give him a slight pass. I'm on the complete opposite side of the spectrum with this question. I two two people. I no matter how many movies I've seen them in, how much they act, I cannot enjoy a movie with them in it. One is Brad Pitt. For some reason, I do not enjoy Brad Pitt movies. I don't know if this is his bad country accent he puts on in every single movie he's in because for some reason he feels the need to do an overly bad Southern American accent. And it's between him, I probably get a lot of flack for this, but I don't like him. I despise, uh, what's his name? Uh, he Terry was Cruz. Well, no, everyone hates Terry <laughs> Cruz. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin Hart. Oh, okay. I don't like Kevin Hart. I, I, it's funny. I did like Kevin Hart in the, in the old movies he was in, but I, I think because the movies were so bad and low budget that he was the best actor in those bad, in those movies. We were just all comedians and he was just the best actor out of all the comedians. It's like, Oh no, he's a really good actor. This, this Kevin Hart guy is really great. And then like the more the movies got, the better the movies got and the better that his, his cast got around him the more he shined that he was just a comedian acting rather than he was an actor and a comedian. Fair. So I was like, oh, he's just doing what he does in comedy, but in the movie. He, he does the same thing every single movie. He gets high, he gets low, he gets competitive, he gets angry, little man syndrome, and then he, he comes save the day, finds a girl then, you know, he's happy. Hate it, cool. despise it. Whereas, the opposite side, The Rock does the same thing every single movie, and it works. <laughs> I don't know why, it just works. Yeah. No, okay. I think that's a fair point. And to be honest, I get your Brad Pitt thing. Like, um, I've never, like, I respect what he's done and I've seen some stuff that I I watch. I love the film. And and to be honest, I love him in the film, but I've never, 
I'm, I'm never massively sold. Uh, for me, one that if we're going the opposite side is uh, Johnny Depp. Like, I think Johnny Depp is, I, I think Johnny Depp is a fantastic actor. But for some reason, I never 100% buy into any one of his out there characters. And for me, I think the ultimate goal is to do what he's doing with these amazing characters, but a little bit better. <laughs> it, it almost and that's a bold statement yeah no he, he comes he, does, oh, he definitely comes off like he's acting rather than he's just and i feel like a good thing with acting is not acting like you're acting and with him it always seems like he's acting yeah <laughs> and it's, i watched i watched little women recently like on my own it was jokes and uh, i was sat at the back and meryl streep out of everyone in that film <laughs> stood out to me as probably like the most over the, I mean, I know she loves doing these like quirky characters the most. She's like, I'm Meryl Streep, I can do this now. And, but actually, I was like, you need to actually, like, I, I, ooh, I'm not sure. Like, everyone was so honest and real. And even though her character's quirky, I was like, oh, it's classic Meryl Streep. And I don't think that's a good thing. You don't want to watch a movie and watch a character they're portraying and go, classic Meryl. But then sometimes, you know, I think I'm not, you're more in the acting world than I am. I look at movies and I say, I see, I'm like, oh, they cast this person for the publicity. Like they only put uh, Morgan Freeman's voice in here because they know people listen to Morgan Freeman. Oh, Where, sure. I mean, don't get me wrong. Morgan Freeman's a great actor, but I'm just, she's just an example of what I was saying. But yeah, yeah I, I, I confess, I don't think, <laughs> I, oh, I don't. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just, obviously Meryl Streep is a well-known, incredible actor. Yeah. Um, but I just find it interesting, you know, like people assume that they're going to be incredible in everything. And actually, you're watching, and you're like, well, I don't know about that. And I think yeah. that's okay. Like, no, I'm wrong. Who are we to judge these multi-millionaire act- actresses and actors and actresses uh, <laughs> when, when <laughs> we're stuck in our four-by-four four homes uh, <laughs> exactly. look, looking at our normal-sized TVs and <laughs> eating ra- bag ramen because <laughs> the grocery stores no. are all sold out. Love <laughs> but uh, all right, man, uh, this was good. Uh, a lot longer probably one of my longer podcasts but it's just because everything just kind of flowed into it yeah man uh, I, I ramble so trim it down no it's it's fine I just, people need something to listen to in this lockdown but uh, I've, I honestly I've really enjoyed it because I don't get an opportunity too often to be able to talk about what I do what I'm trying to do and what I love so it's nice to be able to do this and have it recorded in some way man I really appreciate you picking me so thank you no problem um, so yeah this is We'll call it here. I uh, hope you guys stay safe and stay active, uh, stay creative, uh, make good choices, and yeah, be happy. Have a good one. <laughs>